over how to set up a 203 and a 213. Uh, they're both the exact same drive uh, except for the step pulse multiplier. The 203V is a fixed 10 microsep drive. The 213V has a step pulse multiplier right here, the G901X. That allows it to run at full step, half step, five microstep, or 10 microstep. Uh, so you have the option of running it at lower resolutions. Uh, what you'll want to do is you will want to hook up power first. Uh, I have a 470 microfarad capacitor right here. That's just so I can hook up my uh, connection. It's a lot easier. Uh, what you'll probably have is you'll probably have stranded wire that goes directly into the terminal. So you put ground on terminal one, DC plus on terminal two, and you should have a power supply between 18 and 80 volts. I'm using a 24 volt supply. Uh, you'll then have uh, phase A going to terminal 3, phase A not going into terminal 4, phase B going to terminal 5, and phase B not going to terminal 6. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the power supply. You can see I can move the motor by hand uh, with no power applied. Turn power on and you hear the motor lock in position and it can no longer be moved. That's called a holding torque. So we have holding torque, we have a green LED, nothing is showing any problems, so we are good to go. What we'll do next is turn power off, and we will start connecting our step and direction lines. Uh, I have resistors in here, again, just so I can connect things a lot easier. Uh, and what we have right now is this is our direction. So put ground into common, which is terminal 10, direction into terminal 8, step common into terminal 10 and step into terminal 9 and then before we uh, uh, run the motor we want to make sure we have a current set resistor so the current set resistor what this does is this prevents the 203 or 213 from running at full frame 7 amps without that the drive will output 7 amps no matter what the motor is rated for I uh, this is uh, a formula that's in the data sheet for the drive, but it's gonna be 47 times the power of the motor current divided by the motor current. So we have a 3.5 amp motor. So it's 45 times 3.5 divided by 3.5 is 47K. Uh, we also have in the manual a quick cheat sheet that covers every 500 milliamp increments. You can see at number F or letter F, 3.5 amps, 47K. That's what I have, the limit current 3.5 amps. So we're going to begin running the motor. Uh, I'm going to set it to about two revolutions per second, which is gonna be four kilohertz at 10 microsep. I'm gonna turn power on and the motor should begin to move. And we'll turn on our direction and it changes direction. So. You hear the motor making a little bit of noise. We have the adjustment trim pot right here. Uh, with your cover on, it's gonna be a hole that says adjust. You'll just put a screwdriver down there. Uh, you can see it's a uh, uh, Phillips head or flat head, and there's two dots right here. When we say 11 o'clock or three o'clock, it's where the line in the middle of those two dots goes. So we'll turn it until the motor smooths out. So that's the wrong direction. It's getting rougher. And I'm not sure if you can hear it in the video, but the motor has gotten substantially smoother. The only noise you really hear from it is just its direction change uh, and the compensation noise. Uh, so this is going to be the roughest that's going to run. Uh, if you increase speed, You'll hear the motor changes the uh, tune pretty significantly. And I'm gonna turn direction off so you don't hear that noise at all. So you can hear the motor is running pretty quietly. Uh, as we increase speed, you'll see the waveform change to a full step waveform. And that's what we say morphing is. So the waveform modifies pretty substantially to increase torque uh, at higher speeds. So right now, we're going at 25 revolutions per second. 
I and can't yeah can't stop it at all. I thought I might be able to, but it's going to have a decent amount of power at that speed. So I just decelerated very quickly, uh, and the rotor inertia stalled the motor, but it recovered. So here we are, we'll get it down to one kilohertz, and then what we'll do is we will turn the power off and quickly go over the step pulse multiplier. So step pulse multiplier, as mentioned before, is this daughter board. Uh, and you set the resolution that you desire with the jumpers on there. The jumpers are right here. Uh, I'm going to orient this page, the manual, so you can see how the jumpers are set. So right now, this is 10 micro step. You can see the jumpers on these two, and the jumpers are right there. We're going to set it to full step, just so you can see what the difference is. So the speed before was about a half revolution per second. Uh, this will be 10 times as fast, so it'll be five revolutions per second uh, with the exact same input frequency of one kilohertz. So we're gonna turn power on and it'll be going uh, five times faster. And there we go. I, and quickly just to uh, backtrack a little bit, uh, let's get it to the rough area. Uh, what the actual trim pod adjusts is crossover point on the waveform. Uh, so I'm gonna turn this waveform on. There we go. Okay, so crossover point is right there. You can see and hear the motor get very noisy. And you see that large error in the crossover. What the trim pod adjusts is it adjusts that. So it's sending uh, pretty close to a true sinusoid to the motor. Uh, and that is when a motor is pretty happy. I, so let's increase, so we're back to five revolutions per second. One final thing you may want to do is use the disable input, and that's going to be used for freewheeling a motor for something like an emergency stop. I, I, and when it is held high at five volts, what it'll do is the motor will have zero power. So what we have is we have a five volt supply. Uh, we have the ground connected to terminal 10, which is common. Uh, then we have plus five volts. And plus five volts, I'm just gonna make contact with the terminal. And you see red light comes on. Motor freewheels, I can move it by hand. Uh, and as long as that is held there, it'll do that. When I remove it, I, the motor's gonna be starting at five revolutions per second. It's gonna be unhappy for uh, a few milliseconds and you'll hear it start back up and then continue running. And there we go, we have a green LED. Uh, the motor has full power again and everything is happy. So that is the quick and easy way of setting up a 203 and a 213. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call, send us an email, leave a comment below and we will get back to you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more informative videos, tutorials, and more.